This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock. Hey guys, please take a second to check out esportsgold.com. They're a regular sponsor here of the channel. They've, their insights have helped me grow tremendously. And what they provide for fans are all kinds of stats and ways to follow and keep up with your favorite teams, players, and news in the world of esports. From CSGO, Hearthstone, Dota 2, well, you see the list right there. But you can get more information and be more in the know than your friends when it comes to esports by checking out esportsgold.com. Link below in the description. Thank you. And now let's get to the magic. Hello, and welcome to my 385th consecutive MTG Arena original video. It's me, it's CGB, and there is some debate over that number. Somebody is saying it's one more than I think it is. If you have, if, if any of you have a lot of time and want to go do the math and double check my work, you are welcome to go see how many days of consecutive videos I've uploaded. Until then, don't correct me. Assume I know what I'm doing until you prove that I don't. All right, but that's just what I'm gonna throw out there. We need, we need to be on the same page. We need to be a team on this. We need to be in agreement. But anyway, I get off, I, get, I do digress. What are we doing today? Bant Ramp. You're gonna see this all over the ladder if you aren't already. This deck is being popularized by streamer Crokies, who has a way of taking color combinations and making them great again. He has this interesting build going on, and this is off the Twitter, the latest Twitter. And I'm going to show you a little bit about how I tweak decks for best one. Obviously, he's very high rank mythic in best of three, and that is an accomplishment. I'm not saying anything bad about it. But there's a big thing about it that best of one is kind of a different ball game. And in best of one, you need to be able to interact early. This deck is very slow. The only play it has on turn two is Gross Spiral. It has absolutely no one drops, um, unless you count Mystical Dispute, which is unreliable since your opponent may not play blue. And you can see why. In the sideboard, there's four Devout Decrees, four Aether Gusts, and three Dovin's Vetoes. And basically, after sideboarding, the deck has plenty of two-drop interaction for ju in just the right way for the matchups that need it. But we're in best of one. We don't have a sideboard. So how would you adjust a deck for best of one? I'm going to show you the CGB formula. I do this with a lot of things. First thing, I cut the color posing cards. You can't be sure you're going to play against the correct colors in best of one. Second, I cut the expensive cards. Now, in this case, there aren't that many, surprisingly. It's not as greedy of a deck as you often see, but there's still uh, one Dream Trawler and two Hydroid Crisis, four Nissu Shake the World, and three Elspeth Conquers Death. If there were like four Elspeth Conquers Death and like three or four Crisis and two or three Dream Trawlers, we'd be trimming from these spots. I'm just going to trim one Nissu Who Shakes the World in this case. I'm also going to trim another card that I see as kind of a greedier card, as it's a card that doesn't impact the board. When you're behind, it's not a very good card to play, and that is Tamiyo. Tamiyo is much better when you can play her in a safe space. So Tamiyo is getting a little bit of a trim, and that gives us four open slots to try to play some earlier cards. And then on top of that, I'm considering trimming Narset, as it's one of the cards I have the most trouble with when I see in the list. But... Uh, we'll see. I'll need a compelling reason. Now, as far as what to add, I want early interaction cards that do things in the early game and hit a wide variety of targets. So for me, two cards that could be in the deck that aren't. One is Arboreal Grazer. I don't want to run four Grazer almost ever. It's a card with very diminishing returns. If you draw two, you usually only get to use the ramp ability of one before you run out of cards in your hand to ramp with. So I think two Grazer is just fine. For the other spot, an old standby for me is the Brazen Borrower, who can hit all manner of targets and buy you time, especially against the likes of an Ember Cleave or something of that nature. So I think that's what I want to use for the spots for now. Now, usually I would do a lot more testing. Life got in the way over the last couple of days. I haven't had much magic time to myself to sit down and test. Also, to you viewers on Patreon who are waiting to have your decks reviewed by me, 
uh, who put in like say from about the start of last weekend I do plan to get to that very soon and hopefully catch up on it tomorrow as I have a day off tomorrow it, where I don't have and by day off I mean I don't have other things scheduled so I'm free to do more work content creation all right so that's what's going on with me and this is going to be my first time trying out the band ramp so I might be learning a few things on the fly but I thought maybe a how I tweak decks for best of one process would be nice. I also usually increase the land count when I play best of one, but this deck is already a 28 land deck, so shouldn't have that problem. And it does make sense for those of you balking, scoffing, gasping. <gasps> How could you? 28 lands. Um, it's a really good idea when you play Growth Spiral and Uro. You really want the land effect to matter, and the only way for that to matter is to draw land. So, all right. That is going to be the deck we're going to try out in a standard event today. Apparently not. Um, Bant BO1 ramp. I didn't realize I already imported a Bant ramp. All right, there we go. And there's no more mystical disputes in this deck. Somebody else has to run this yard. Who wants to run the yard? You can run the yard. Stained Glass to Fairy. No, you run a lot of yards. Uro, you run all my Simic yards. Night of Autumn, you never get to run anything. Let's go. <laughs> Best of one standard event, my favorite way to make a YouTube video, has a beginning, has a middle, has an end, isn't the nebulous ladder, and often does have a decent variety of opponents unless you hit a mono red day, which definitely happens as well. Hand is pretty great. The shatter, the knight, yep. The teferi, the being on the play is probably the best part. Can definitely scry other lands to the bottom as we look for our heavy, heavy hitters. Is it a red day? Looks like it might be a red day. So do we want to bounce something with the borrower? Like just right away? Slow him down? Yeah, I actually think that might not be bad. The question is when? They might play a robber of the rich. And if they do that... We'll make them pay for it again. All right, they go to attacks. Boingy. We want to make their light up the stage super duper awkward. He's back. It's Dash Bitter. Have you met Teferi? Let's slow things down. Shiny stained glass Teferi. A member of my Twitch chat required me to buy these on the 90% off daily deal. That's just something new I'm doing on Twitch. Um, my viewers are, they get a say, or they get to decide how I spend my gems on. And it turns out people like cosmetics. All right. But yeah, my subscribers, I figure they put money to support me. They can have some say in where the gems go, where my winnings go. Go ahead and pay two life and say go here, because we might shatter this sky. Aw, we're we thinking. Okay, let's shatter the sky now so they don't even get this Rimrock Knight. It's essentially like killing the Rimrock Knight. And if we let it resolve, the opponent would get to pump their runaway Steamkin, draw a card. We don't want that. Looks like Torbrand's going to hang out with us next turn. Here we go. So I like getting a 4-3 Knight of Autumn, I think. Knight of Autumn in this matchup can kill an Ember Cleave. It can also take out the Enchantment Seder Annex boy, but I don't know. Let's start with a Growth Spiral. If we draw an untapped um, land that doesn't shock, we don't have to pay life. And we do. We'll go get another blue source for the Borrower. Play you. Be a 4-3. And we'll scry. We do need an answer to the Torbran. Which I assume is what the opponent's going to do. Yep. Meet the beard. We found it! We found the answer to the Torbran. Life is beautiful. Let's try this. So, I was thinking maybe I wanted to minus Teferi there to eventually get back... Teferi with the Elspeth Conqueror's death. 
But I think the opponent will have to remove something from the board, or they'll fall too far behind. So I think Elspeth Conqueror's Death will get me something. I just don't know what for random but deuce. Well, that's cool. Now I don't have to worry about when Elspeth Conqueror's Death goes off. We're just gonna spam. Just gonna spam this. <laughs> and uh, yeah, they out of there. 18 life we're still at, and I think we dealt that two damage to ourselves. We have a Narset without the blue mana to play her. In fact, we have two. So hopefully Teferi will find that. And then we have, it's it's kind of rough. These three Planeswalkers don't impact the board. On the draw, this hand would be pretty much unkeepable. On the play, it might be. We just can't get run over. So hold on to your butts, as I like to say. Because that was a line in Jurassic Park. And it makes me laugh. Samuel L. Freaking Jackson. The man, the myth, the legend. All right. Sweet. We got another Hollowed Fountain. Our opponent's off to the races with a Lovestruck Beast. And a Castle Garenbrig. So, this green Stompy of some kind. We draw the Grazer. I kind of... Like, I want Grazer defense for my Planeswalkers, but I feel like I have to spend this turn on a 3-mana Planeswalker. If I use the Narset, the opponent can attack it with the Paradise Druid. Then they play out the Lovestruck Beast, if they have a land, which they probably do. It's best of one. Um, hmm. Bouncing the Lovestruck Beast is probably fine. Bouncing the token might be fine. If I bounce the token here, the opponent attacks the Teferi with the Paradise Druid. Hmm. This is tough. I love the opponent know I'm thinking. Um, but yeah, let's draw a card deeper with the Teferi. Then we're more likely to have the Grazer hit something next turn. And there's Nissa. Jeez. We are Bant Super Friends. We are actually Bant Super Friends. Remember that the land from Grazer enters tapped, so I couldn't play Grazer and Teferi last turn. A Horn Beetle. Okay, so the opponent was off by a turn. They can't get their Lovestruck Beast down. This card, at the beginning of combat, plus one, plus one counter. If you control a creature, power four or greater. Oh, that's a draw. That is a top deck. All right, I'm going to play a Narset and dig, and then I'm going to play a Grazer to defend her. Since the opponent is stuck on mana, let's make it awkward for them to kill to both attack the Narset and get through the Grazer and play something else. And we're going to slowly reel them in. If they're missing land drop, it means their hand is all full of creatures. So we need to kill as many as possible. Shatter. What? Deathless Knight. I didn't see that coming. Not gonna lie. So blocking here wouldn't save Narset, so let's not block. Didn't see that coming. 28 lands. How do we not draw them? It's amazing how this works. So, Tamiyo could fill the graveyard and possibly get a land back next turn, but Tamiyo is very likely to die. Let's send back the Horn Beetle, I think. We could also send back the Paradise Druid and shrink their mana abilities, but I think sending this back is fine. Land. Nope. Nope, you can run 28 lands and get mana screwed. It happens. Yep, here come the things. We're still trying to sucker them in. Suck them in. Again, we can't save Teferi, so don't block. Growth Spiral. Let's see if Uro can find us a green source. If Uro can, we get to also play Growth Spiral. Oh, I guess not. I should have tapped careful. Frickin' Castle Art and Veil. Frickin' Castle Art and Veil, boys and girls. Auto Tapper and Castles. I knew I should have taken out this castle. I knew I should have. I kept on saying, I bet that castle's gonna cost me. I bet it's gonna hurt me more than it will help me. My lord. This opponent is 
what we call committed. How many deathless knights can one have? All right, it looks like we have to reset the board. Do I get to grow a spiral if I do it this way? Okay, I do. Eww. Cover your, your ears. Ugh. Why? Why they do this? Cool pelt collection, bro. All right, moving right along. I mean, it's, they still have a ton of cards. They got to draw a card there. Now they have a questing beast, for God's sakes. Me, I'm committed to drawing all the Planeswalkers in my deck. That's a pretty good draw. I think I like bringing out Uro, but I can't bring out Uro and have Borrower available, so that makes it a lot worse. If that's the case. Let's see, what can we do with a Nissa? We can have Nissa plus Borrower and start making three threes. That's probably decent. And then we have a bunch of extra mana next turn, and we do need it. All right, white, green, green. We need to untap a blue source, so hopefully this land doesn't die somehow. Because we do need our blue sources. And then what we're going to do is bounce this questing beast right before combat. They made six mana. Heaven, heaven forbid. Yorvo. All right, love struck beast. Away with your questing beast, I think, is still the play. And now we've got to clean up the board. We know that the opponent is going to bring out a Questing Beast next turn. We want to use this blue, this blue, and two green to play Euro. We'd like to attack with this first. We can't cast anything else that's blue. So it doesn't look like I get to attack first. Because I can't, I just can't get the board clean enough without playing a Teferi. I guess I could untap the other Hollowed Fountain, right? Let's see, one, two, three, four, nope. I could play the Teferi and bounce something. It wouldn't be good enough. I really do want to use Elspeth Conqueror's Death on the Questing Beast, though. Let's do it like this, then. Oops. Gotta do it this way. Man is hard, okay? Let's send Yorvo back. Untap the blue source. Bring out your bring out you. Uh, be careful what we get rid of. I'm too used to getting rid of everything. Let's leave that shatter of the sky for Tamio to get back. Gain a little life, draw a little card. Another land. One, two, three, four. Yep, doesn't do enough. Definitely a bit choked on the blue sources here. Yep, questing beast mode. Rabid bite would have been a heartbreaker. Rah! Alright, I didn't think the opponent would attack in, but it must mean they have another questing beast. Or they're, you know, very Geronimo. So how do we want to use our blue mana this time? It is definitely the bottleneck of our of our existence at the moment. I think I want you. Do we want the life? Let's get the size. The size can take on another questing beast. Let's play you. Go ahead and exile the love struck beast. Use the Nissa. See, blue, blue. I could still play a Teferi or a Narset this turn. I guess I'll untap a forest. 
Hey, yeah. It's a nice big attack. And then Tamio. I think that's better than the other two. You can get back a Shatter the Sky or a Narset right now, but let's fill the graveyard because Yorvo may, not Yorvo, Euro may really appreciate that. Uh, let's try to find Hydroid Crisis. That would be fun. <laughs> Lovely. Lovely. All right, this game turned in a big way. There were a few scary turns there. But we're all right. We're okay. We're going to wreck them anyway. All right, first things first. This will solve our mana issues. They all have to enter tapped. Don't pay life for these. Unless you just want to do a really weird flex. Which I don't recommend. Oh wait, hold on. Can go like this. Is there a blue source down there? There is. Looks fun. Bring out the Krasis. Plus the Teferi. We also could have just grabbed back the Nissa, which would have, could have been fun. But now all these are indestructible, so they can rumble. We can shatter the sky and get to keep our lands. It's one of the cool things that we can do with indestructible land. I don't know if the opponent knows what's happening. Maybe they just didn't want that harpooner. Just didn't need that harpooner. Nissa comes back next turn from Elspeth Conqueror's death. Whatever. Let's uh, go ahead and Teferi spam. Green Mage just never quit fighting, man. It's got the heart of a champion. Never surrender. The green creatures will keep coming until absolutely all of them have died. Harpooner takes down the Krasis. Spell Collector grows from the death trigger. We'll get back Nissa, who shaketh our world. Cover your ears. And the lands still fight for us. Attack. pretty good hand we're on the play again we've been getting lucky and shatter the sky even as a two of is here for us always so it makes me feel warm and fuzzy let's go let's start with a scry we're looking for another land that will do that will do our opponent that mono red well, no brazen borrower for the scorch spitty this time And the one-two punch, for sure. Yeah, they might be afraid of, like, a Wildborn Preserver and not attack. That doesn't sound like a Red Mage, does it? All right, so we're not going to fetch until next turn. Conquering death, huh? So, what do you guys think? Definitely want the planes. Because we're going to want the ability to shatter this sky. But I'm thinking I could buy more time before I do it. Like, I could play Uro. But almost every time I let my opponent untap with a runaway Steamkin, something bad happens to me. So I'm thinking Teferi bounce the Steamkin. Sacrificial Teferi. We'll get it back later. 
buy ourself a little more time. I'm not going to sack this land until I need to. Okay, there's Annex. That can be conquered. That is a frustrating one, though. Ignoring the Teferi. Okay. Not afraid of a sweeper while that card's around. Land? Nope. Oh, but that works. Always forget it, but it works. Harder of Veils, huh? Not the kind of card you want against a mono red. Out of there. They might have another, so makes sense to not try to wait on this Elspeth Conqueror's Death and do other things. I think it also makes sense to hold back on Nissa until after we shatter the sky, blowing up your own land. Bad form. Not what you want to be up to. Steamy Boy returns. Shock the Knight. And are we going to take out the Teferi now, I wonder? Yep. Yeah, as soon as I think of one, too. Hmm. We could use the Uro and try to pull even more out of the opponent, but I don't think that's a good idea anymore. As soon as the Steam King goes nuts, bad things can happen. Plus, we've got a Nyssa waiting in the wings and an Elspeth Conqueror's Death. Like, we want to get to these cards, but we don't want... We don't want to run Nyssa out before we shatter, you know? So, let's do this. There is the aggressive line of Uro. If I hit a land, I'll shatter. But I don't like it. Too risky for me. We have double blue. We have double white now. We have double green. I think we can go get a forest at this point. Alright, the knights are here. Welcome to the nightclub. Easiest reload of our opponent's life, probably. They're just like, boom, boom, bam. Take that. Show you a pretty cool trick. If you think that your land is going to die anyway, and you want to make, like, say, an aggressive block with it, you can animate a Fabled Passage. And then you can make your block and sacrifice it. So if I want to absorb the hit, in this case, from the Rimrock Knight, because it's going to have four power coming over with Fervent Champion, and I don't want to block Fervent Champion, because because of first strike and a pump spell, I'd lose this anyway, then I can do that. Observe. Will let first strike damage hit, I guess? Because this doesn't have first strike. Just in case they had an effect. Alright. Then we go get another forest, so we untap with a bunch of Nissa mana. I could have made the trade there, but I'd much rather have the land. <laughs> They're either picking on me because they think I should have traded, or they actually or they legitimately thought that was cool. I'm not sure which. Alright. I guess we should draw first. See what we find. Uro. Uro, Uro, Uro. Land. Sure. Conquer death. Bring back Uro? I think so. I can I don't have a breeding pool to animate for this growth spiral though. That would be nice. I do it first and then untap. Oh, well, they had enough of my thinkings. They had enough. Sure. We've been pretty fortunate to be on the play a lot with these kind of hands, whereas they'd be a lot worse on the draw. So let's keep it running. As we go for win number four. Do we want to shake the world? We already have another five drop in our hand. 
On the play, I'll keep uh, Nissa Shakes the World. See what happens. Oh boy. Here we go again. I, you know, I kind of jinxed it at the start. I said, well, every now, it's a nice diverse meta. You see a lot of different decks, and then sometimes it's a red day. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's a red day. Uh huh. All right. They forgot to light up the stage. Amateur hour. Let's set that back. While there's only one threat on the field and you're more likely to untap with your Teferi, it's a good time to set them back. Rimrock's here. Spitter's here. We've also been fortunate. We've had Shatter the Sky a lot. I don't see Shatter the Sky just yet. So, well, there's something we haven't seen yet. Let's try this. Uro. Uro, 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 Uro. Welcome to Uro Nation. Boom. Boom. Okay, then. Well, we'll hang on to that. Probably be next turn. Although we'll have to decide on that. Let's see what the opponent does. Is it Torbran? It's Torbran. So now I don't think the opponent will attack the Teferi, which is great for us. Because instant speed shatter the sky is nuts. Even though we're at six and it's very scurry. That's more like it. I could play Nissa, couldn't I? I need to leave open you. And then what do I untap? You? That doesn't do it. I would need two of these. Let's see if I left open you, untap you. Yeah, I can't do it. If I had two temple gardens, it would work, but it does not. All right. Also, sitting here and thinking for a moment, that maybe makes them think I don't have a wrath. Okay, so they go for the shock. We're going to do it now. So that only does two damage instead of four. And we'll see if they can still kill us. All they need are two more shocks. It's going to be a big decision coming up on whether or not we play the Dream Trawler or the Uro. Do we need that burst of life now, or can we wait a turn and try to take over the game? Rimrock Knight. Scorch Spitter. The creatures are back. They can't Ember Cleave, though, with Teferi on the field. That's a big deal. And if they could have done four to my face, they would have. Now, if they could do three to my face, Scorch Spitter would do one. If they have another Torbran, and they play that, this would take me up to seven, this would take me back down to four, then this would hit me and take me to zero. So I think I have to bounce something with the Teferi. The other option is we could play the Nissa and a Uro, I think. But I think getting the Dream Trawler down makes a lot of sense. All right, I'm going to start here. I'm going to send this back so I don't lose to a Torbran. I could lose to Land Ember Cleave. Or I wouldn't lose, but it would be a huge setback. And let's see what happens. Land. Torbran, yep. Would have lost to that Torbran. Would have lost to that Torbran if we didn't bounce the Spida. Or still might lose to a Shock. Got a block. All right, now we start conquering death. The dream, the trawler will come back. Let's have a look around. So we could also play Nyssa. And then one, two, three, four, and five. We could play Nyssa and Elspeth conquers death. I think that's the way we want to be.
Since the land might die, I'm just going to reanimate this castle. Ah, uh, no, this temple is fine, right? We have enough blue sources. White, and then white, white, what the blah. Okay. Next turn, big Crassus. And we'll see if the opponent can kill us from seven. Another Torbrand won't do it. Not without help. Embercleave won't do it. Not without help. Robber of the Rich. Base. Come on. Let me untap. Don't be random skewer the critic gamer. Bone crush my face down to one. So scary. All right. So... Let's Uro, because that's a better rate on life than the Krasis, and then Krasis. And since we're going to pump all our mana into that Krasis, we attack first. Best land we could draw. And when you start doing this, they know what's coming. They know what's coming. Do we need all of our land? Probably not, right? We could play this for 8, 9, 10. Pretty good. And still have another blocker. If I had left up a green, I could have played the Grazer. Yeah. Probably overkill at that point and not worth playing for with only two in the deck, but interesting to think about. Yay, on the play. On the play all day. That's how we do it. That's the CGB way. Uh. I smell a sick hip-hop beat. Just... Just forming in my mind. All right. What you got? Black mana. What the hell is this? I have become accustomed to a certain way of life in which I only play against mountains. Stupid cat. All right. Full on Jundo. I see. I see. I wonder what this matchup is like. I guess we have Knight of Autumn and take out a lot of the key cards. As for right now, what does Teferi bounce? I think we just take away the food. Teferi bouncing food has been pretty successful for me over the over the years. The years of me Teferiing these matchups. Okay, we found another land. Which is pretty much what we want to keep finding land. Yeah, cats are so aggro these days. Be a pick. Uro? Sure. Just gonna have Tamio go try to find me another. I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the play. I don't need to name Uro either. So what am I looking for? I could look for Nissa. I know I noticed this somewhere. I guess when you have a crisis you look for a Nissa, right? We're really looking for Uro. Don't tell anyone. It's the big secret. <laughs> So they definitely don't have an engine piece yet. We don't see anything along the lines of Witches Oven Mayhem Devil Trail of Crumbs. Knight of Autumn is good against them, and we probably want to save our Teferi to bounce our Knight of Autumn, because if we keep those off the battlefield, we should be pretty favored. Hello. Get back a land, play Anissa. Or do we play with more patience than that?
Let's do the trick where we scry and then name what we see. That won't do, though. Darn it. Plan foiled. What if I shattered the sky on these? Is that stupid? I don't think they can pick off the Tamiyo. And things start getting a lot better next turn. We're not going to want to shatter the sky after... After we play Nissa anyway, so let's just do it. The opponent can make a food, bring back one cat, attack the Tamiyo. It's sad. But Tamiyo kind of did what Tamiyo does. I don't know. Maybe that wasn't good enough. I like it a lot less now that Tamiyo's going to die. Toronto boy. Okay. We thrashing. Let's animate a forest. We don't want to attack, but we can play out this grazer to throw in front of the Brontodon when it attacks Nyssa, so we don't have to throw a land in front. And then next turn we Krasis. That is, unless you have the Murderous Rider. Nebraska. Kill the Grazer. That's a sacrificial Vraska. Huh? Opponent found an oven. It's not a sacrificial Vraska. Well, it kind of is still. Can they tap the oven now. Let's do this. So, pre combat, play you. Destroy the oven. Nay to the oven. Kitty comes back. There's only one food. So now, untap this forest. Attack the Vraska. They didn't stay to see the Hydra crisis. All right. Yeah, on the play. I'm. I'm kind of. So I. I sound whiny to some people when I point out that I was on the draw a lot in an event. I'm trying to balance it by pointing out that I am insanely lucky today and I'm on the play a lot. Results may vary. Fellow gamers, results may vary. I, when you're on the play, Robber of the Rich, it doesn't even usually steal from you. It's amazing. What do you think? Do we Uro Ramp? Then we can Elspeth Conquer's death next turn, but we have nothing to really conquer. On the other hand, if we play out a Teferi and bounce the robber, it keeps our opponent pretty busy. Not to mention, dead Teferi makes for a better Elspeth Conquer's death eventually. But, you know what? Let's go for the Uro plan. I smell an Annex hardened in the forge coming down next turn. And I want to hit it with the Elspeth Conquer's Death immediately. We might even want to bounce our Elspeth Conquer's Death, because there could be multiples. So the opponent, if they play... Yep, there it is. There it frickin' is. We have a lot of, like, everything in our hand is white, so I'm gonna get the planes just in case we need it. If we need to double spell with white cards at some point. Next turn is probably Knight of Autumn and Teferi. All right, double robbings. They still need to play two cards, though, to even steal from us. Which it doesn't look like they have. Hmm. 
We slid that underneath and Elspeth conquers death. I had another land. Okay. They're deciding if they want to shock me. Do you want to shock me? So, let's see. Next turn, their plan is either Annex or Ember Cleave. If we get out to Ferry, they're going to have a hard time cleaving. They probably can't. Having an Elspeth Conqueror's Death on, on hand for this Annex is pretty good. So if we play the 4-3, that makes things pretty hard for them. We can think they have a shock, so they'll probably trade it, and then we'll get it back with Elspeth. Okay. This is fine. Of course, they don't have to trade that shock. Can't make them. We definitely do this first. <laughs> it didn't seem like a shock. Make four three. Bounce a robber. Keep constricting their mana. Next turn, Elspeth Conqueror's Death goes off. It can bring out a Uro just to get the trigger, if that's what we need. But I shouldn't be afraid to block with this Knight of Autumn or let this Teferi die if I'd rather get that. Whatever is the best advantage. Here come the creatures, but no attacks. All right, Uro it is. Uro will not stay. Uro will trigger and go away again. See what we see? Spiral. It is more resources and a random card off the top, and it fills the graveyard for the Uro, so I'll keep it. Conquer death again. Yep. I'm gonna save. I think I'll save the Skyland. I know that I want this. It's kind of one of those weird calls where do I want the Scry more or do I need the mana? And I should have the mana for everything I want to do right now. All right. Will they main phase an Ember Cleave here? Remember, Teferi is shutting that stuff down. Looks like we might be Rimrock Knighting. No. Nope. Attack down the Teferi. Eh? Never mind. Forget attacking Teferi. So, block. They can use Castle for a trade. I'm fine with that. Just means Uro comes back. If they were planning to use a trick in combat, that's not going to do. They don't use castle. Okay. I think Teferi might be messing with them. Yep. Teferi's messing with them. An active Teferi that, that is alive is a real pain for the red deck. And <laughs> with that oops comes the scoops. Game 7. Uh, game 8. Anyway, we're going for our 7th win. We have, we're on the play again. We have a turn three Nissa potentially. Let's do this. Graze them. All right, now all we want off the top are land. That's all we need. Land, and we're gonna shake this world. I guess we need one more green source, but we got a lot of lands that are green in our deck. Uh-oh. Okay, I'll well, start here. We might get the sweat. Green source. Nope. All right, we get the sweat. We do actually, we are actually short a green source. I did not think this would be a problem. Esper control. Green source. You don't Dovin's Veto. You're not a Dovin's Veto gamer. Animate the breeding pool. 
So we can grow spiral. Hit him. All right, what you got? Home of the sea. Yeah, make it, make it good. Make it good. Going first is broken. I know I've talked about it a lot in this video. But we could still lose. There's a prison realm. We got this sweet start. We're definitely ahead in a lot of respects, but the opponent still has a bunch of cards in their hand. Knight of Autumn, though, is going to look good. Why did that just... Oh, I need to do this before the Nissa left the battlefield. That was an oops. Another Uro, huh? Got cocky. Too much swag. Too much swag, assert dominance. We're not even doing attack with all, we're just carefully, carefully making sure that the Grazer attacks. Casket, huh? All right, Trinket Esper. Probably some kind of Doom Foretold nonsense. Oh, Teferi. Oh, baby. Vantress Gargoyle? It can block right now. Let's keep that in mind. Uh, let's lead with Uro. Who knows what we might draw. Hello. It's just keep on coming. Make the opponent play it again. They don't know we have a backup. They'll probably... They will probably just replay the... Um, replay the Prison Realm, making them spend three mana to deal with the Nyssa, and then we just play another attack for a bundle. Plus, we're getting pretty close to Uro time. Alright, five cards in hand. This can still block... Being a Knight of Autumn gamer should come in handy in this matchup if we draw them. Elspeth conquers death. <laughs> Can get rid of the Prison Realm now. Still have this to, to think about, but having this on the field is... It's strong. Okay, they don't want to play. Yeah, I try not to rely on Prison Realms and Banishing Lights in an Elspeth Conquers Death World. It's, uh, it's rough. Wait a minute. Oh, this must be for a quest. I was gonna say, they shortchanged me. There you go. There we go. Hitting those gems, hitting that gold. And, uh, loving this deck. I think you saw... A pretty great representation of how it doesn't need a bunch of ones and two drops to be pretty awesome if it goes first all the time. I wasn't sure about Narset. I almost never wanted to draw it. I was usually pretty unhappy if it was in my hand compared to other things. I think it's for the Teamer Reclamation matchup and the Mirror, which are things we didn't see. So maybe it's better than I think it is and it just didn't show it today. But I wouldn't be opposed to swapping Narset with something else. I do like the Grazer. Another ramp spell that I've been thinking about is Wolf Willow Haven. I wouldn't play Paradise Druid because you are a Shatter the Sky deck. But Wolf Willow Haven might fit if you want to do a little more ramp. And maybe there's something else we can spot into this two spot to make it not the absolute slowest deck in the world. But you saw here today, if it goes first, it usually gets away with it. All right. So... We'll leave the deck as it is for today, but those are some ideas for the future. And now that we're here at the end of the video, remember to help me out and click on the eSports Gold link. I should remember to put up a comment for it and put the, a link in the chat. They are a sponsor of the channel. They've been helping me out for a long time uh, and haven't asked much in return for, from me for the most part. I think I've done one or two other shout outs. So just clicking that link lets them know that you, I mean, if you appreciate the content, 
the way that they've been supporting it has made a big difference, so clicking the link helps me out. All right, thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video, which to my knowledge will be the 386th. But if someone wants to do the math, I wouldn't mind. All right, see you later.